On uh, the 21st, uh, I was notified by the Wyoming uh, field office that an accident had occurred, a mobile equipment accident, and a serious injury was the result. Uh, we was uh, signed with tech support. Uh, they came out to uh, add professional uh, technical uh, assistance in the investigation. I got a call from my uh, supervisor saying that um, the um, blasting company was going to come up and lay out a shot up in the, um, the top, uh, top bench. And uh, I said, okay, you know, we'll have it ready for him when he uh, you know, arrives. So I, I drove my uh, pickup truck up there and checked the area out. Noticed that there was a lot of overburden on top of the uh, ledge. So, uh, you know, I noticed that everybody else was, you know, pretty busy, you know, making stone, keeping things going. And uh, I drove down down to the uh, yard, grabbed a D6 high track, brought it up, started um, you know skimming the top, getting the excess mud and uh, gravel off the top of the uh, ledge. And uh, after a while, it kept on uh, pulling up bigger and bigger rocks. So I said, you know, the, the D6 here's a little too aggressive for the job, so I'll go down, I'll grab the small loader, which was an IT-14. You know, just, you know, finish skim, you know, what's left. And so, you know, because it wasn't as heavy as a machine as the D6. And uh, so I went, brought the D6 down and grabbed the IT-14. You know, checked everything out. Went up to the top and uh, started to uh, basically plow the excess uh, gravel. You know, it was more of a muddy, uh, wet gravel started to plow it down the incline because there was a steep incline before you went up to the actual um, the blast area that we were going to lay out. It's a steep ramp right at the top. It was at, uh, shot with, uh, by tech support with a uh, hand amity level at 23% uh, grade. Uh, the conditions of the ramp was rough, muddy, and uh, slick. So I started you know, going up and down the hill with the, with the machine and then uh, I pretty much, you know, told myself, eh, you know, let me turn around. I'll back drag it one more time. Well, as I turned around the machine, there it was on a slight incline. I would say about midway up the uh, the hill. And the uh, I started to feel the machine to start to tip over. So I had about four seconds to figure out what am I going to do here. And uh, I decided, you know, I said, well, there's a 100-foot face over to the right of me. And, uh, you know, is the machine going to roll down over that face, you know, if it gets uh, rolling? So I basically says, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out. So I undid my, my uh, seatbelt and jumped out the uphill uh, side of the machine. And... Uh, as I jumped out, the machine started turning over slowly, and I was actually walking across the steps of the machine as it was rolling like this. And uh, <clears throat> I jumped onto the ground because of the steepness of the hill. I actually, the momentum actually made me slide down underneath the machine and out in front of it. And then uh, as I was laying on the ground, I seen the machine rolling towards me, and I it rolled over one more time and the, the tires on the rear landed right on my legs. And uh, I looked down at my legs and I, I noticed that they were all, they were mangled, you know, and mush. But I was still, you know, I was still conscious. And, uh, you know, all I could do is, you know, the first thing that came to me was the, in the beginning of the year, we saw an MSHA video of a loader rolling on top of a guy. And that's the first thing that came to my head. That's the first thing. At that point, uh, there was, uh, the crusher operator had seen Paul coming out of the cab and uh, he notified, there was a 990 cat front end loader right below it, he notified uh, that miner on the inloader to go up and uh, 
provide assistance or see what he could do. The guy that runs the primary uh, crusher, crusher tower, um, he had a two-way radio. He basically radioed the uh, main loader. It's a, a bigger uh, 990 uh, cat loader down in the pit. And he came up the hill and uh, I guided him in and he basically lifted up, I got him to lift the, uh, the smaller machine off my legs and I actually pulled myself out from underneath the machine and you know, got to safety. Uh, what happened was a welder came and uh, they got the medical kits from the welding shop, the blanket and everything. And uh, the crew, the welder and uh, I believe it was a truck driver took the medical kit up there and uh, by that time they had a contractor uh, that was contract drilling up on the top bench and he had his medical uh, training and between all of them they was able to s provide support. But as this was all going on everybody was communicating with uh, the main office to get the ambulance you know coming and uh, the, the uh, some of my fellow you know the employees that came up they said, you know, calm down, take it easy, Paul, you know, you're going to be all right. He was awake the whole time, and you got to give the man credit to have an inloader sitting on both legs, looking down, knowing they're both crushed, and to be able to tell the inloader guy, hey, pick it up off of me, and I'll climb out from underneath it because there's nobody around here to help you. You know, it shows he wanted to live. As far as my, um, my rescue and all that, that was, you know, picture perfect, the way it went down. The, you know, because the guys were trained, they knew what to do. So it does work. Training does work. Other statements uh, we obtained during uh, uh, the accident investigation was from one of his friends uh, that was there at the scene uh, and uh, the injured uh, Miner stated that uh, this is what you get when you don't wear your seat belts. So that was a real powerful statement that he knew he had made a mistake at that point. Your instincts tell you certain things, but there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there and films of the sh that prove that if you stay in the machine, you'll survive. You know, I saw the machine after it was after it rolled over. There is like barely any damage to it at all. Rollover protection cabs uh, is like a race car cab. I mean, they're designed and perfected. There's the strongest point on any piece of the mobile equipment. And uh, when you look back now at Paul's accident and his statement uh, even stated that once, once he looked at the piece of equipment and saw the cab and what we, we visioned and what we saw, he would have received no injuries. There was no injuries to the inside of the cab. So. You know, he made the fatal mistake, though, of trying to remove his seatbelt and jump out while it was moving. You know, check the area out that you're working on. Use the proper machinery. And, uh, you know, I can say use your head, but, you know, I used my head and I got hurt. <laughs> so, you want to go with the, you want to take your time and make sure you're doing the right thing right off the shot. You know, you don't want to rush into a hurry or do anything like that. You know, miners should help miners. People should help people. If you see a friend or somebody that's not wearing it, you should have the gumption or the nerve to look up at somebody and say, put your seatbelt on. You know, we, we want to play football with you. Or we want to go play poker with you tonight. You know, so, you know, everybody's got to help. Everybody's got to pitch in. But, uh, we're starting to see it in the mining industry that it, 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 it's a common practice where a lot of employees still refuse to either wear them or they think the safest thing to do is they can out jump and moving a piece of equipment and time after time again, just like in this miner's case and he stated, he thought he could do it. And it, you know, it, just time and time again, that's always the last statement. Well, I wish I'd have kept it on. Well, I didn't stay in. I didn't keep my seat belt on. Now, you know, I'm missing my legs. It does happen. It does happen. I really believe Paul's number one uh, priority in life now 
will be uh, his life experiences and his thoughts on seat belts. And I believe he'll be one of the best seat belt teachers in the United States because he's got proven experience and exposure to tell people and explain why seat belts should be worn. I like to tell everybody that uh, you know we get the training every week, you know, every two weeks. You know, everybody that's in the mining gets the training and we preach all the time about the accidents and what can happen. And guess what? I've been in the business for 23 years and it happened. So don't think it can happen if you're out there because it does. It does.